So hi, everybody. Uh, I am very grateful that you're here on this beautiful day. Um, so thank you, Chantel, for uh, the introduction. So my name is Helena Schaeffer, and uh, I live in Montreal. I've always lived in Montreal. I was born here, and I guess I'll live here forever. So uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, my journey, uh, how it all began. Well, I, I, in my professional life, I uh, have, I was a translator. I'm retired now, but uh, I always did crafts all through my life. My grandmother taught me how to sew on a treadle sewing machine, but she died when I was 10, so that was, uh, I didn't get very much sewing. But I did crafts, I did macrame, I did cross stitch, I did uh, knitting and crochet, and I uh, never did any kind of uh, quilting. So how did I get from this, my very first quilt in 1988, to this, one of my latest pieces? So I took a bus trip to the Vermont Quilt Festival. This was not when I did, this was when it first started. The Vermont Quilt Festival, as probably everybody knows, uh, was in existence for 45 years, and this year it stopped. But the year that I went, I guess it was in 1988, I just got on a bus from La Maison de Calico in Point Claire Village. Didn't know anything about quilting. I didn't know anybody. I got on the bus and went to see these quilts that were hanging from the rafters, that were exhibited everywhere. And it just blew my mind. I thought if ever I could make anything as beautiful as these and exhibit them, I would just be so happy and so uh, I went back to Point Claire Maison de Calico I took a quilting class and this was uh, the first quilt that I made I think I was the only person who ever made an Amish sampler quilt in their classes but what struck me about Amish quilting was the color the stitching the, the juxtaposition of the different colors the orange against the brown and the purple and the blue and it just spoke to me and that is what just captured my heart and the tiny tiny stitches so a few years later i started making uh, traditional quilts i went to san francisco where the esprit clothing company at the time had a vast collection of amish quilts and you were allowed to, as long as you didn't make any noise, you could wander around the offices and just feast your eyes on these quilts. And this one I had seen in the catalog. It was not on display at the time, but when I came home, I thought, I am going to recreate this quilt, and this is it. I thought, I'll start with a one-inch square in the middle and just make a little, you know, miniature quilt just as a, a souvenir of my trip. Well, it ended up being five feet square, starting with the one-inch red square square there but you can see that this is the back you can see the quilting uh, so I always thought oh, I must have been Amish in another life because my hand quilting stitches are very very tiny and I just loved the hand quilting and even then you could see that I I like to do my own thing I, I really don't enjoy following patterns because um, I don't like people telling me what to do basically so this quilt is uh, one of the first, maybe the first, that I made using my own hand-dyed fabrics and others. Um, I love dyeing fabric because I just did do it kind of unscientifically, and I don't know what I'm going to end up with, and whatever I end up with is just pure joy. So this quilt is called... Uh, Reflections of Monet, and it was inspired by Monet's huge water lily paintings in uh, the Orangerie in Paris. So this was uh, created at, for a call for entries uh, with the show was called um, Artistic Impressions. So this was my impression of Monet, and it was accepted into the Quilters Newsletter uh, big exhibition in Lyon, France. And later it was put on the cover of Quilter's Newsletter magazine, uh, which sadly doesn't exist anymore either. 
But just a little aside, a little funny story. When I went to Lyon, first I went to Paris with my husband and we went to the Orangerie to kind of pay homage to the inspiration for this quilt. And I was just so thrilled to see the curved walls of the Orangerie and I just kind of went up close and just stuck my face into the beautiful painting and the buzzers went off and the security guards came running and I backed away. So I did, uh, once I started experimenting with my own uh, designs, uh, it was kind of a way for me to be free of other people's expectations, to take inspiration from people, but to really do my own thing. So I started making these monochromatic uh, quilts with lots and lots of squares and rectangles and some circles of different colors. This one was red and you can see the one behind me is the second one that I did because this one got sold. Uh, so I did a red one and I found that what makes the red even redder is using other colors. So then I did a green one and this one is called uh, green tea and I don't know if you can see the black stitching, the heavy stitching, that's a green tea leaf. At this point, I was uh, been quilting for quite a while, and I was invited to speak at the uh, Atwater Library. And so I brought all my quilts, all these big body bags of quilts, and I stood up there and I talked and I showed them. And then at the end, somebody said to me, raised their hand and said, Helena, your work is so beautiful. It's almost like art. And I thought, it is art. It's textile art. And I became determined to kind of carry a banner for textile art to be treated like art. And uh, I'll tell you a bit of a story here, trying to speed it up. But a friend of mine had an exhibition, as she does of watercolors, in a gallery downtown Montreal. And it was a rental gallery. And so she rented the gallery, showed her work, sold her work. It was beautiful, a really beautiful place. And then she said, Paulina, why don't we do a joint show next year? So I said, great. But driving home from this, I thought, why don't I open an art gallery so that people can show their art, whatever their art is? And uh, so that's what I did. I uh, follow your dreams. Uh, I have also, I have to say, a most supportive, wonderful engineer husband. And when I suggested it, he didn't say, Helena, you are a lunatic. He said, sure, let's do it. So we went looking for a place, like a location that we could turn into an art gallery. And believe it or not, this was what we bought. So there's me and my two dogs at the time. And so the gallery was uh, there where the curtain is, grotty curtain is hanging there. That was to be the gallery. And then we uh, would, uh, create a beautiful apartment for our daughter next door and then rent the two apartments above it, that. So it we takes a lot of imagination to turn that building into kidding. an art gallery. It was <laughs> a, a slum. Uh, it was in a very nice location. The, um, the main street of St. Anne de Bellevue was just one block away and so you could see this from from the main street. It was near the parking lot. We had a certain criteria that we could see how it could be repurposed. Um, so talk about imagination. This was the kitchen in the apartment that became our daughter's apartment. The woman who had lived there had lived there for 18 years with 10 cats, or was it 10, 18 cats and 10 years? Anyway, whatever it was, it was so smelly. You could smell it from down the block. And in the kitchen, the walls were so rotten, we had to just scrape everything out. There's my wonderful husband. We did so much of the work by ourselves. It, I, when I think back on it, it was insane. We, um, in order to make the art gallery, we had to take these beautiful planks off the ceiling um, because of fire regulations, fire code. We had to reinforce the floors for public safety. So we took all the boards off the ceiling one by one planed them, took the paint off, laid them on the floor in the uh, next door apartment, our daughter's apartment. And so there was this beautiful hundred year old pine flooring. 
And this is how it came out when it opened. Gallery West. It opened in January. Uh, I can't remember what year at this moment. Maybe 2012. The first exhibition was dedicated to my friend Jennifer Amiel, who had uh, just died at the age of 49 of cancer. So the first opening exhibition was of her work, and the proceeds went to the SBCA uh, Montérégie, which was her favorite charity. So after that show closed, I said, well, might as well put my own work in there. So I displayed my own quilts, uh, and they looked fantastic, filled the whole gallery. And then I, uh, people rented the gallery by the week, and it was very successful. And then I decided to have some group shows that I organized and uh, curated. So this one was called um, Code Red. So all the work had to have red in it. And so this was really the start of my of putting my work on canvas because um, it seemed to be taken more seriously as a artwork when it was on canvas. But also the bigger step was instead of, I, I just kind of had a flash of instead of sewing all these little squares and rectangles together, what if I cut the pieces out and laid them onto a background somehow and then just kind of collaged them. So this was the very first of my what I call color explosion works. So there it is. So you can see that it was called um, Not Just Red. And that was really the idea. And I painted the canvas and I put that on there and that was my very first one. Another show that I had was uh, called March Blues. And so all the work had to have blue in it. It was a fantastic show. And so this was my piece that I created for that show. And this one's called uh, Calypso. And then I also had a lot of um, charitable shows in, like to do fundraising in the gallery. This one, I did a few uh, art to the rescue and all the sales were 50% to the artist and 50% to uh, Animatch, which is the dog rescue organization that I work with, and Rosie Animal Adoption. And they were fantastically successful. We raised thousands of dollars. Anyway, the gallery went along merrily for about four years, and it was really fun, and I met lots of wonderful people, and it was very successful, and so much so that three other galleries opened up using the same concept uh, in the West Island. And so there's just not enough artists to keep all four galleries going. So my husband always said, when it stops being fun, that's when we stop doing it. So um, we decided to stop. And this was the last exhibition. Now this one was called, this one was amazing. This was called um, Exquisite Corpse based on the game that the Surrealists played in the 1920s. So the idea was that three artists would get together and one would do the head, one would do the torso, and one would do the legs. And nobody would know what the other was doing. And then they would be put together. And I put them together on these frames and we exhibited them in the gallery for the very last show. And so I worked on the one on the right. I don't know if you can see the torso there, the kind of muscly torso. That was mine. And also the dog head on the left. That was my, uh, my Lucy, my pug. Anyway, this, so this was really a fantastic exhibition. It was great. And then the gallery closed. And it was time to move on. This beautiful platter of cupcakes was made by my friend. And so moving right along, I decided to, a friend of mine said, you know, your color uh, explosions, they're fantastic. Why don't you try that bigger? So I said, okay. So I, I did. And so this was the first of my large pieces. This one is about, hmm, I don't remember, about 70 inches wide. This one was called Spontaneous Combustion. And it um, was exhibited very widely. Is it still? Uh, is it still? Sorry, sorry. Is it still yeah. a collage on canvas? Yes. Canvas, yes. No, not on canvas. No, no. This one is a quilt. 
Okay, this sorry, is, okay. This is all standard fast. quilt, okay. Yeah, yeah, but big. Yeah, I, I don't think that they, they make canvases this big. But or but the, all the pieces are 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 stuck together as with collage. Yeah. There's no piecing. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No piecing. No. Wow. And a lot of my uh, hand dyed fabric and a very intensive quilting. Wow. So at about the same time here, this is the Houston Quilt Festival. I don't know how many of you have been, but it is a mind boggling experience. So there's a very good friend of mine, Marion Perro. She had uh, buddy passes for Air Canada because her husband had been a pilot. And she said one year, why don't we go? Let's just get on a plane and go. So we went. We were just blown away. There are 50,000 people who go to this quilt show. There are 2,000 quilts. It is just incredible. Like it is just uh, unbelievable. So at this show, we saw uh, the Husqvarna. Um, it was a challenge for artists to make 50 by 50 quilts based on a certain theme. And it was an annual show. And we said, well, why don't we try it? Let's, let's make one for next year. So we did. And this was our first one together as a partnership. Our partnership lasted for about... 10 years and I'm going to show you all the quilts we worked on but this was the first one this was called um can't remember the name of it at the moment um earth glow because the uh big circle at the top whoops sorry that's not what I meant to do I'm just going to show you this this was um, silk I had dyed most of these fabrics and it turned out you can't really see it but um it just looked like the world it looked like south america north america europe it was all there in that piece of fabric which i had cut into a circle and just by chance it just was meant to be so this was accepted into the show and so it was um in the show the next year and then the next year we did this one which was called origins and this is all my hand dyed fabric when we worked together, Marion and I would work on the piecing together, but I would dye the fabric and uh, do the quilting. And this one was uh, in the show the next year, and it was bought by uh, Carrie Bresnahan, who is the uh, founder of the International Quilt, or Quilt Association. Anyway, that was a big uh, excitement. Here we are working on it together. So uh, we had at the time this cordless iron, which was great for ironing pieces down. This, these were like quilts, but we used a lot of um, fused fabrics. And so we would just fuse them on the wall. Anyway, so this was a great iron for doing that. And, but then one day I looked at the iron and it was on fire. And so I opened the window and threw it out the window. And fortunately it was winter, it landed in the snow and that was the end of that iron. So the, the, these are the, the catalogs for that, uh, those two exhibitions. Arctic Shape was the first one, and Imagine That was the second one. This was our third piece that we worked on together. Um, it was so fun to work together. It was the most amazing partnership. We encouraged each other to just kind of do, like really the the whole was more than the sum of the parts we we had a fantastic partnership this was our next one also with all my hand dyed fabrics and the, these were large big um so we we're trying all kinds of different um designs and patterns and you can see this one was called acanthus there you can't really see it but there's an acanthus leaf quilted into the background of that so this was our next one uh, called um, vitamin C orange and this was using my collage this was the first one we did together using my collage technique so the orange all the parts of the orange there's like a thousand pieces of different orange and they um, the segments here are uh, quilted so like darker quilting to make it stand out and then the um, Pith was made out of batting that was dyed and manipulated. And then the background is silk. Uh, this part is silk and this is cotton. And they, because they take the dye differently, it, it comes out a bit different. So this was 
uh, exhibited in a uh, what show. I can't remember. Anyway, this one was in Houston also. I have a, I have a question. Yeah. So yeah. so th there's no, there's no painting on the fabric. It's it's dyed. It's you, dyed you don't dyed. paint over the fabric. No, no. Sometimes maybe just a little tiny touch of uh, paint, but it's it's very little. Wow. And so here you get a close up of really the quilting and the the batting and the and so this is the thousands of small pieces of fabric and um, yeah it's it, the, who, the who problem come up with the are, idea of putting batting on the top I never saw that well we were just <laughs> trying to figure out how do you make <laughs> orange pith you know so that's what that's what we came up with. So this was our next joint one. This was in response to the uh, National Quilt Museum in the States had a sh contest every year for called New Quilts from an Old Favorite. And so the uh, theme that year was sunflowers, but they were thinking more like sunflower block, quilt, quilt block. But this was our sunflower. I think this is one of my favorite ones. So this was also the collage of the uh, in the petals like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pieces and um, the dyed background and the quilting and what really makes this special is the way it comes off the quilt and in fact uh, so we worked on the wall with this and had it all pinned onto the wall and then we were just about finished and then Marion said, you know, in my dreams, I thought it needed another leaf. So it was this leaf. So we added this other leaf and it is gorgeous. Here we are working on it. Uh, so there's my two dogs at the time lying on the floor, the two sewing machines. And this was like our little um, um, sewing factory. So there's our drawings and here's the quilt as pinned up onto the board. And also it was fun to figure out how to do the three dimensional, um, the little spikes that come out of the sunflower and all these little bits in the middle here, these were all individual three dimensional um, pieces that were fused together and it's a lot and lot of hand dyed fabric. And this little leaf here, we called it little curly. I just love the way it kind of, um, you, you get the three dimensionality of the flower. And here's another flower. This one is based on a flower in my garden, a peony. Uh, and this one has very three dimensional segments. We wanted the petals in the middle of the yellow part to really stick out. And so trying to figure out how to do that we ended up using wire sewed into the silk this is all silk the yellow all dyed silk different colors of yellow and so in order to have some of the petals that came out and were you know you could bend them and shape them and also uh, <clears throat> i i did this little ant using um um that interfacing uh, that you wash out you can get a, a different uh, close-up view of the petals here. And then this one is artichoke. This one was really fun. This was, was so fun to figure out how to do it, how to get the, the three-dimensionality of the choke here. So this is all hand-dyed organza that was dyed and then cut into little strips. But this part here, the choke, this was the hardest part, this was silk that we unraveled to get the, the threads and then combed with a comb, an actual comb, and then put tool on the top to kind of hold it down so it wouldn't fall apart. And then I dyed the background. The background is silk and it is gray. If you flip it over, it, it was dark gray, but I love the pattern of it, but not the color. So I dyed it and used the reverse side. So this is the purple. I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, how do you cut those thousands of small pieces? Very straight or on regular with a ruler? Uh, no. Thank you. Your work no, is amazing. No, no. With uh, scissors, just with scissors. Scissors. Yeah. Good yeah. scissors. Well, I've gone through a lot of scissors. I've worn out a lot of scissors. Yeah. 
anyway, but the fun part is the like the creation. How do you create something that's going to come out the way you want it to? You know, like to have something in your head and then have it come out. It's it's the most wonderful feeling. So here's a bit of a close up of the the choke. So you can see when I when I use the mouse here. Do you see it, Chantal? When I, are you seeing the little mouse moving? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so that was really fun. And the quilting of this was so fun. It's quilted in green thread, so it would stick out. I absolutely love machine quilting. So this one was dragon fruit. This one was created for a Sakwa show. Sakwa being the Studio Art Quilts Associates um, show. I'm a member and I have been for quite a few years. So the show was called Food for Thought. And so the could be, you know, any any food. So I thought, well, we haven't done a dragon fruit yet. Let's do dragon fruit. And the colors are so sensational. Anyway, so I dyed all this fabric and um, and then thought, well, how are we going to do the inside? So amazing of this beautiful fruit. So this is all beaded. This is all little beads. And then the quilting on this was, oh, this is a, an old tablecloth, a vintage tablecloth. And it was so fun to quilt. And there's a close up. So you can see the quilting is a very, very important part of the process. And so this one it toured for four years around the world and then it was sold. And so I never saw it again. And here's our last one, the papaya. So this one, we did paint these seeds. The papaya seeds are painted. And it's the same, you know, collage and uh, dyed. There's another tablecloth that I dyed and quilted. And that was the last one in our collaboration. How big are those pieces? Uh, because uh, the, 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 quilting, the quilting seems to so, so tiny too. So. Yeah, this is uh, oh, about 80 inches okay. uh, wide, I think. Yeah, and the fun part, well, the challenging part of this was the shadow. That was the most challenging to get that shadow right. Uh, because I think it's a very important to get, you know, create the depth, the, the heaviness of that papaya. And that was the end of that. So the, unfortunately, our partnership came to an end because Marion became unwell and we couldn't do it anymore. So then the rest you're going to see is all me. So this was my, my I, I would guess you would say this is my masterpiece. This is called Kilauea. It was inspired by the volcano Kilauea that was in Hawaii whenever that exploded. And um, this one is huge. This one is... Um, 95 I believe this is the detail of the corner so uh, you can see it's the same technique it's got but I think at this point I was adding hand quilting on it too just to add more interest and then this one I submitted to the International Quilt Festival in Chicago and it won best of show uh, and so there it is Best of show, spotlights, right as you come in. As I came down the escalator and saw that hanging there, I just could not believe it. <clears throat> anyway, so I went off to Chicago, and because of best of show, the giant winner there, um, they asked me to sit there and talk about it, and so I did, which was very enjoyable. But listening to people, there was, you know, people think you can't hear them. Anyway, some lady comes up, and she's looking at it and saying, that's not a quilt. Anyway, it is a quilt. And uh, every great artist we add here have that same comment at one point in their career. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, this was I one think when you get that comment, it means you are a real artist. <laughs> <laughs> I have no doubt. I know I am. But uh, thank you, Chantal. I have anyway, a question. How, how yeah. different is it to work just by yourself and to work with somebody else? Like you don't have any feedback. Is it? How does it impact on your work? Uh, well, it, it impacted my work in that my work is, is different now. I 
I don't do well I actually I have a lot of quilts that I'm not going to be showing you because I just want to go on for hours but um, with Marion I did more representational ones and on my own I do more um, abstract but the so we did push each other out of our comfort zones and I'm forever grateful to that partnership um, so it is different. It is totally different. That's a very good question. Um, but, you know, sometimes people make comments and that pushes me in a different direction. And I have to say I'm very grateful to Sakwa for giving me the opportunity to show my work in so many different venues. This is a tiny one. This one is 7 by 10. This was one that was submitted for a um, traveling trunk show. And it was um, acquired by the National Quilt Museum. So it's in their permanent collection. So from the huge to the tiny. And with Sakwa also, I was uh, able to exhibit my work in this show, Color with a U. This was a Sakwa Canadian show for Eastern Canada. And the um, premise was color color, you know, right up my alley with a U, because that's the U is what makes us different from our American friends. Color does not have a U in the States. And, you know, we use U in our spelling. And uh, so this was my piece that was it was put on the cover of the catalog. Here it is. Uh, I called it a simple twist of fate. And this one is on canvas. And it probably has the most colors of any of my quilts. So that one traveled around for four years. Some of the shows were canceled because of COVID, but I was able to see the last one that was in Toronto in the Homer Watson gallery, and it was great to have it back again. And also with Sakwa, every year there's a, an auction. It's called a benefit auction, um, and it's a reverse auction. And at the beginning of the week, uh, everything is $750. And the next day, the price goes down to 500, then to 350, then to 250. Anyway, ending up at 100. So every year for about 12 years now, I have donated a piece. And so this is one. And there's another one. These are all on canvas. These are 12 by 12 inches. That's another one. This one sold for $1,000, the top price. It, and then I this have was, a question. Is it different yeah. when you work when you know that your work will be on canvas or or, or like a full quilt? Do you work uh, do you work differently or well the only no, the only difference is the edges because on these I cut the edges to to you know extend off or to be on top of the canvas. And when it's on uh, as a quilt, it's you know straight. Okay, but when when you're putting your, your pieces together it doesn't oh, it's exactly doesn't, the same. no it's exactly the same, the same. yeah mm -hmm. yeah so this one is a 12 inch circle and uh so this one just sold this week and also with sakwa i was uh, given the opportunity to be featured in this magazine art quilt quarterly and uh, there is a whole big article about me it was very exciting. So these are some of my favorite pieces that I um, submitted. And okay, so moving along to something different now is the subject of dogs. So these are my two, well, two of my dogs, my current dog on the, this is Chloe here, who's now 17. And this is my Lucy, who's no longer with us. But these two are quite a pair, and they were very, very inspiring to my work. So in addition to all the color explosions, I also have done a lot of dog art. So there's my Lucy. Uh, well, actually, another aside is I was in this international group called 12 by the Dozen. This was an international blog group. And every four months, we would be challenged to do a piece in various sizes on uh, different themes. And so. Um, through that, I started doing a series called uh, that were kind of a homage to Klimt. So I did Chloe, my other dog, and the Klimt. That was a very big 
big piece of Chloe with Klimpty motifs. I did Daisy, my my previous dog I like Klimt. I did a cat I like Klimt. And this is my Lucy I like Klimt. So this has got beads in it and silk. Uh, the background is all silk and uh, the quilting. Anyway, this is so that's my my little my Lucy. It's one of my favorites. And so this is painted. I painted this. I painted I painted the eyes. Anyway, I painted part of it just to get my little Lucy in there. Then I did a whole series of Andy Warhol inspired silk screen quilts. This was the first one. This was my uh, Chihuahua, Loki. And so this was called uh, 49 Lokis. This one ex was exhibited widely all over the place. Anyway, the fun thing about this is that each square, even though it's the same silk screen um, screen, they come out differently depending on the color. The contrast of color, like this one here, when you've got it, it looks kind of spooky and creepy. Anyway, same Loki, but each square also has a different motif. All hand quilted, hand beaded, hand stitched, all by hand. This has got beads. Anyway, after doing some of the bead ones, I thought no more beads. I just did French knots. I did all kinds of quilting. Then I did a whole series of these different silk screened dogs. This one was, um, I, I rough, I, participated in raffles for my any match my uh, favorite dog rescue and so donated a gift certificate for a custom dog portrait so this is one that I made of the winner of that auction and here's another one this one is my uh, Lucy again and this is a whippet this is Milo so they look very different if you do them on the different colored backgrounds or on the white. This is all different whites, a lot of silk. And of course, the different faces look different in the different colors. I have a question. Did, did you yeah. know how to do the technique you used to paint that? To the, oh, I have that idea. I will learn the technique to transfer the picture to the fabric, and then I will do something about it. Um, you know, I can't remember how I started it. It... Um, I think I had the idea that I wanted to do that first one of, of Loki the Chihuahua and then I would try to figure out how I was going to do it and then okay. research and found out how to do the silk screen. You buy this um, material, it's kind of like a plasticky sheet and you use, it's it's a bit complicated, you, you do yeah, it. Yeah, like, you get the idea, okay, I'll, I'll try that, I'll learn that, I'll do yeah. it. Yeah, great. Uh, you do it with a light box and then you um anyway it develops this chemical and anyway so yeah so i've done lots of these this one is a labrador and it's just so fun these are 30 by 30 these are on canvas so people hang them on their walls and then this is my current pug this is olive she's a real character and very uh inspiring for my art so here she is. Uh, this is another kind of art that I've been doing, this thread sketch. So these I donated also to Sakwa to uh, auctions. Um, and these are done on vintage damask tablecloths, which I have masses of, which I just love for dyeing. They take the dye so beautifully. And then you see the, the wonderful texture of the fabric. Anyway, so there's two little olives. And then I also do them with the threads hanging out, too. So this is Chloe. This is my beautiful Chloe. And then I've also done a lot of vintage photographs that I turn into these artworks on the vintage fabric. And they're framed. And I've sold quite a lot of those my art shows. And each one is different. Each one is so fun. So... This is one of my favorite pieces. So I started working on in the round format. A friend of mine, an artist from the Lakeshore Artist, said, Alina, why don't you try round? And she handed me a 12-inch round circle. I said, wow, I really like that idea. So I started doing round pieces. This one is uh, 36 inches. It is called 
coral reef and it is one of my favorites anyway I had this hanging in a show of the Lakeshore artist which I'll tell you about later and somebody came walking up to it and said you know this reminds me of a puzzle I used to do with my grandmother she was just a young woman she was like maybe 20 and she said it reminds me of the puzzle that we used to do of a coral reef and said, you know what this is called coral reef and she just burst into tears and bought it so this is another one uh, called temperature rising another big 36 inch so each one uh, working on red is just my most favorite I could work on red every single day uh, you know I finish them and I say this one is my favorite I love this one the most and then I go on to the next one I say this one is my favorite I love this one the most so here it is hanging in its home it was sold bringing light and joy to somebody else's home and then here are two more uh, when I went to um, somebody this was during COVID so actually there is my is a mask <laughs> I went to this person's house she wanted to buy my work and so I brought this one along I brought along two small ones smaller ones and she said well do you have anything bigger so I said well I've got this one she said well you know I need another one because you know it would look unbalanced I said well I'm working on a green one it's not quite finished do you want to see it and she said sure so she ended up buying the two of them but since this one wasn't finished the green one I was able to quilt their names into the piece and I gave them a map of where their names were so they can find them in the future. Is there a color that you don't like to work with? Yes I don't like to work with brown <laughs> and in fact I, I said this to an artist friend of mine one day and she said well then I challenge you to work in brown so I did I made one 12 by 12 piece it was very hard for me it came out okay I mean it, it was nice but I, I I did not enjoy the experience and then she bought it so I I guess it was okay <laughs> but it, it was hard for me that's brown is the only color I don't like to work with and so this was my first red piece that um, somebody bought and it just looks so amazing in the room I had to share it with you like she already had the red curtains and the red pillows and the grand piano and it just looked so beautiful and then when it was gone I missed it so much that I made this one that's behind me because I wanted it and it's not the same but it's red and then um, here's three more pieces that somebody but they look nice the 12 by 12 as a group so this person bought three there's somebody else who bought six and another place I've had a great chance to exhibit is uh, the Stuart Hall art rental gallery in Point Claire every year they put out a call to artists from all over Montreal or elsewhere and they exhibit the selected works in the month of November and then for the rest of the year they have them for rent so people can rent them uh, for a month they can rent them and then the rental charge goes on to the purchase price and so here's my two from last year uh, that were in the gallery and then this one was sold so I won't see it again I've sold quite a few that way I this have another one. question I have always yes. ask a question do you work at just one piece at a time or you work like two or three in the same room and you and go from one to time. another no one at a time well I could be working on the kind of uh, collage of one while quilting another if they're very large but usually I just do one at a time but okay. this one is one that I, this is like very unique this one is that was a commission the woman was a very keen gardener and she wanted colors that were inspired by her garden so that's this this was quite big this was 48 on canvas for 36 by 48 yeah I love this one what do I call this one Eclat de joie spark of joy and then I'm just going to show you some of my smallers these are 12 by 12 
can get a lot of colors in a 12 inch piece these are on canvas and actually I have to show you something is there someone in here? anyway at one point a friend of mine gave me a silk scarf she used to work in a thrift store a charity thrift store and somebody had donated this scarf that was so worn out and so holy that they couldn't sell it but she said Alina maybe you can do something with this and that was oh here this here is a piece this I have a piece of that scarf in almost every single piece that I make it's just kind of a a talisman for me and it started me on a whole path of using vintage and thrifted um, clothing and scarves and fabric and so now I go to thrift stores and buy clothes and and chop them up in addition to the fabric that I dye this is one that I did uh, what did I call this sunflower sutra this one was a fundraiser for Ukraine when the war first started in Ukraine I um, put this up for sale and it is now in Sweden so you can see here is the hand larger hand stitches and is there a piece of that scarf in there I wonder yes there's a piece of that scarf and um, yep there's another one and this is another different one and is there a piece of scarf in there yeah right there that's a piece of scarf soon there'll be no scarf left this one was inspired by spring flowers and you can see here the hand stitching this is thread that I dyed so you get all the different colors and then I also um, stamp and paint some fabric not when it's on the quilt but before so I'll have pieces of fabric that's just like Swiss cheese and it's all cut up and there's just you know holes hanging together by th threads I have a technical question when, yes. when, do, when do you when you quilt do you put like a batting under it under it or uh, just just good fabric? question good question I'll show you um, I'll show you the process step by step okay, I have thank you. Of that. but um, actually it's um, the big quilts the quilt quilts are with batting like the normal way with fabric backing batting and then I put misty fuse to hold the pieces down and then I after the pieces are all down I put tool or I iron them then I put tool so the, like netting very fine netting because otherwise the sewing machine foot would get caught and all the pieces would fly off and so the tool just gives me a smooth surface to quilt on and there's my signature that's in the lower right side of all my pieces because and you know after seeing all that we just want everybody will want to try it ah, <laughs> be my guest great and red 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 gosh I love red and um there's another one this is I think one of my I just made this one very recently you can see a lot of the stitching here and another one of the circular ones I really love it's funny when I show them people either love the circle or they don't love the circle anyway I love both I love the square and the circle And then I did a few of these black and red blood moon. I love the red with the black. It's so powerful. And then this one was a an, an very anomaly for me. Very, this one has got a lot of significance because during COVID, I made thousands of masks, like thousands and thousands and thousands of masks as part of the Beaconsfield Quilters Guild. We had a different teams going making masks and my husband made the the wires for the nose pieces and uh, we had teams that went around and picked them up and distributed them anyway I made thousands 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 kept me going during COVID along with baking sourdough bread um, and then after when masks became more available I started making um, masks out of my hand dyed fabric and one of the local uh, cafes asked me to make them and sell them there 
So I dyed a lot of fabric. And so out of the offcuts, I made this piece. So this is made out of almost entirely my hand dyed fabric from the masks. I have a question from France. Yeah. Uh, how do you finish the round ones with a facing or is it mounted or canvas? It's mounted on a plywood. I buy these plywood circles, so they're quite substantial. I zigzag the edges and uh, glue it onto the plywood, and then I put tape around the edges of the plywood. So it's finished, and you just hang it on your wall. And the fun thing about doing them on canvas, though, is painting the canvas, because each one is like a little artwork by itself before the quilt goes on it. This is just a tiny one. This one is six by six. So you get a good close up of the, the stitching. And yeah, this one was fun. I just made this for my last show. So how do I store all my fabric? Well, the little teeny pieces, because the pieces I use are this big, um, I don't throw anything away until it's smaller than this. And even then, so all the little tiny pieces I store in these bins. And the <clears throat> big pieces I store in this cupboard. I um, like that picture. <laughs> <laughs> so it's I can relate to it. <laughs> it's very, they're all folded up, but by color and uh, sometimes messier than others. And so here's where I work. So here I am working on uh, Blood Moon. And uh, so I have a handy quilter that I do the quilting on. I have a beautiful studio. I'm so lucky. It's got windows on three sides. So here's some of my thread, my gloves, my sewing machine. And so I'm going to show you my process now. So here's the pile of fabric. Usually it's like a mountain. There's my red quilt there on the wall. Usually this is like a a huge mountain this is just a small section of the fabric when I'm working sometimes I have a table beside me and the table is piled three feet high of fabric and I just kind of go like this through the fabric until I find just the piece that I want so here is how I start so I have a piece of felt this is just a teeny one so I'm just showing you a small example and each piece I lay down on there's the misty fuse I lay it down onto there and there's the fabric pile getting bigger. And I just cut little pieces and until I figure out where I'm going with it. It's the fabric. The pile is getting bigger. The fabric tells me what to do. I'll start off thinking, hmm, I think I want to do green, maybe with some pink. And then there it goes. So here's all the pieces. This is how I want it to be. Now I iron it. Then I paint the canvas. Then I quilt it. And there it is finished. So it's just a little piece. I really love that one. And so I mentioned the Lakeshore Artists before. So the Lakeshore Artists is a group of professional artists here in the West Island. And it's a juried um, you, you have to be accepted. You have to be juried into the association. And so I was juried in about mm, 10 years ago, approximately. And um, I'm the only textile artist in the group. I feel very privileged and lucky to be in this wonderful association. We have two shows a year. This one is at Stewart Hall outside. There's my tent. This was just uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So there's my Lucy. And um, here's some of my artwork. I had my cards here. These are my silk screens cards. And anyway, one third of the proceeds are donated to the On Rock Food Bank. And um, it's a wonderful way to bring my art to the public. If I had five cents for everybody who said, oh, wow, your work, it's so beautiful, it's so original, its I've never seen anything like it, it's so amazing, it's so incredible, and then they keep walking. And so, yeah, I hear a lot of that. However, I did sell quite a lot um, that weekend, and uh, 
it was a wonderful experience. And I always feel that when you're involved in something, you have to be involved 100%. So I give 100% to this association. I was president for two years of COVID, which was painful because it was all the meetings were on Zoom and try and keep people enthused for two years on Zoom. It was not easy. But anyway, I did it. I have a question uh, about the process yeah. you showed us. Um, yeah. uh, somebody asked, is the felt piece stays in? The, the felt piece under the Misty Fuse? Is it what? Is it Does it stays in? Does oh, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Stays. Thank you. Um, so the world of threads, if nobody has been to this or has not heard of it, this is something that you should go to. It is in Oakville. It's been happening for maybe 10 years, but the, the last show I think was in 2018 because of COVID. It's every three years, I believe. Um, I had a piece in it uh, in 2018 in the last show. And so it's opening October 14th. And uh, there, as you can see, there's artists from all over the world, uh, from Canada to Wales. And one of the artists is me. And I'm going to have a solo show in this. And the funny picture of me. Don't look at me. But this is my series. It's going to be in the solo show called Colors of the Chakras. Uh, so these are the seven. It's kind of the colors of the rainbow. But each chakra in Sanskrit, it has a, a deep meaning. And in my yoga practice, um, anyway, I, I became a yoga teacher, and so I worked on these, contemplating the colors and the emotions of each of the colors of the chakras. And so each of these is 36 inches, and so all together it's more than 21 feet, and I'm going to have a show of these in Oakville. And so here's a close-up view of the blue one. I have a fantastic, fantastic, professional photographer who takes pictures of my work and uh, so this is one of the series this one is this is a quilt this is very large also and this has been exhibited this was in actually the world of threads the last show in the 2018 this was in there and uh, I have just submitted it to SACWA's Fierce Planets exhibition. It was accepted. And it is going to be traveling around in different museums in the States for four years, starting in January. So I thought it was very planetary, cosmos looking, and I guess they agreed. And this year, for the Stuart Hall Art Rental Gallery that I showed you a picture of, those two round pieces, They've taken three of my work, so they've got this one is going in. This is called uh, Roman Candle. And this one is on canvas, and it's 20 by 24. It's called Reflections. Actually, I'll tell you a funny story about this one. I was working on it. I wanted to do orange and blue complementary colors. So I started in the orange section, and I'm working out to the blue. And then I go out into our backyard and look at our pool, and there's an orange bucket from Home Depot, and it's reflecting into the blue water of the pool. And I thought, oh my, there's my quilt. And, but this was already made. Anyway, so that's why I call it Reflections. And A Simple Twist of Fate has returned from its show, and it's now going into the Stuart Hall uh, Art Rental Gallery. And you might want to know what's on my work surface at the moment. It is this. This is going to be a 60 inches long by 16 across. Uh, this is for a challenge in our guild, and it's called um, The Sky's the Limit. So it's kind of like a cosmic piece. And so there's my quilt, and there's this table the ironing board overflowing and um, yeah. I have another question. Sorry. Yes. The, uh, and the several slides ago, you, you showed us you, you, were, you were working straight on the walls. Now you're working flat on the table? Yes. Okay. Yes. 
Even this for big pieces? One. For bigger? Yes. Okay. Yes. In fact, when I did the huge, giant, giant red one, uh, my husband built me an extension of my table. So it it came out wider. Like I moved, I had to move the ironing board and it came out bigger. And even then, the table wasn't big enough. So I had to work on it rolled. I had to roll it and then work on one section horizontally at a time. And you're lucky dogs don't jump on table. Uh, yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, the dogs are only interested in food. <laughs> and then this is the last slide. So anyway, as I mentioned before, I am a yoga teacher. I finished my training in, um, in COVID, actually. And now I teach yoga Friday mornings at 9.15 on Zoom. So everybody is invited to join my free class. I uh, take donations, which I give to a different charity every month. And I welcome you to contact me if you want to join my yoga class. And this is my annual birthday picture on the at the lake. My birthday's in August. And that's it. Okay, how do I get back to you? Oops. Yeah, you're, you're back. I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. Oh. So thanks, thanks a lot, Eleanor, for your presentation. It was really lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have like a minute uh, if you have to ask other questions. Wait a minute. I'm trying to, I can't see anything. Where, how do I get this? Alt tab. Alt tab. <laughs> uh, there. Oops. No. So everybody stays from the beginning to the end. So yeah, thanks oh. everybody. Thank you a lot. And thanks again. Elena. It is my pleasure. It is my pleasure. Oh. Thank you for having me. Okay, Thank so. you, Elena. I'm really dazzled by how you works. Thank oh, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, it gives me such joy. You know. You cannot be sad when you work with colors. Exactly. Yes. And yeah, just, you know, it's a way for me too to kind of process emotions and to process things while I'm doing it and, and when somebody connects with it and you know enough to want to have it in their home it's just incredible wonderful Carol thing. said thank you very beautiful work thank so, you so thank you Elena so see you see you again this afternoon see you this afternoon bye, <laughs> bye.